First four game win streak of the season. That's incredible. Do you feel, is it absolutely incredible? It is absolutely amazing. <laughs> wow. Do you feel some things transforming for the team right now? I think we're just starting to fight. Um, you know, quite frankly, I'd say the last three games, especially the last two before this one, haven't quite been ideal. Um, we didn't shoot the ball very well in those games, but yet we found a way uh, to battle. Tonight we got off to a great start and we kind of let go of the rope. We found a way to battle back. So I think, you know, we're just really finding that competitive spirit that it takes to win in this league. And, you know, it's, it's starting to show in the win call. Dante goes for the strip up two uh, while you guys are in the penalty. As some, you know, you've done that late in games at times. How risky is that? And, and, and what does that say about him to not only attempt it, but get it? Uh, I mean, it's definitely risky, but um, I've, like I've always said, you have to play off instincts, you know, and if I don't care who it is, if someone put the ball in your face, you're going to go after it uh, if you're an aggressive defender, and Dante is a very aggressive defender. So um, you, you just live with it, and, you know, Dame had it going. Uh, you got to trust a guy like that to know, like, you know, he's putting the ball on the floor. He's starting to get buckets. Like, what? where can I get that advantage? And right there, you know, it was the press up on him, and he exposed the ball, and Dante took it. So I wasn't um, – I mean, I don't, I don't worry about that too much. You know, you got to make a play on both ends of the floor. It's no different on the defensive end than, you know, a guy trying to make a play on the offensive end. Draymond, that, that sequence, you had the, the block shot, one, one defensive sequence, the next one down. You fought pretty hard to, to get that defensive rebound. How, how big are those, those plays when you look back? I mean, in Kaminga's two-handed slam off, off of one of those um, during that. Uh, well, I mean, they're definitely big plays, especially at that point in the game, uh, you know, where we know we have to get stops in order to win the game. And um, it's kind of caught in a tough situation with Eubanks uh, going to the rim. Uh, just wanted to make a play on the ball. Uh, I, I knew right there I was kind of in no man's land. Like I'm in between. Uh, I can't stop the lob, and I couldn't necessarily stop Dame, you know. And so I, I just tried to go for the ball and was able to get a hand on it. And and then on those rebounds, you know, it, it comes down to who wants the ball more uh, at that point in the game. And I wanted to win, so we needed it. Fast start, obviously. You guys were outscored by 24 in the second and third quarter. What was the main thing that clicked in that fourth quarter, especially defensively? Uh, I think guys really started back getting into the ball. Um, we were giving up so much dribble penetration uh, that second and third quarter. And, and I think it started at the end of that third quarter with Ty Jerome, uh, the stop that he had on Anthony Simons. If I'm not, yeah, I think that was the end of the third quarter. And, you know, he got up into him and was able to not only – uh, mess up their possession, but he took the ball from him. And, you know, you're able to feed off of that. And once he pressured the ball like that, everybody else fell in line, and we started back getting the ball pressure that we were getting in the first quarter, and it turned the game for us. And then JP did what JP does, Clay did what Clay does, and Dante hit a big shot. Guys, JK was uh, made some big moves. So uh, guys just stepped up and made plays where they needed. After Ty's stop, like you were just saying, you could see kind of the bench, everyone was so hyped up, excited. Was there kind of a message uh, going into the fourth quarter as far as the bench goes? Uh, I mean, I think, like I said, I think that's something that you just feed off of. You know, you see a guy um, who just, you know, puts it all on the line, lock in like that on the defensive end and get a stop. Like I said, especially when, when we were really, um, you know, that's, that's something that you can build off of on that end. And uh, we were able to do that. JP had six turnovers at halftime, but how did you see him recover from that to keep playing his game? I thought he was, I thought he was playing well. He had some turnovers, a couple of mishandled basketballs. I, I didn't think he was really playing in much traffic. Uh, you know, he just had a couple of them where he mishandled the ball, and that happens. But uh, we need him to stay aggressive, and you know, he did that tonight. Um, you know, forty-one points, six assists, seven turnovers. Somebody else can cry about it. I'm not. <laughs> Early at the warm-up shooting, um, I was watching you, and your three-pointers looked quite good, and I felt like maybe something is different today, and then you had those two three-pointers. Was there anything different? Uh, I mean, my shot's been feeling good, um, you know, so it's just a matter of taking, you know, stepping in and knocking it down, um, taking the ones that I get with confidence, uh, not turning down shots that are there, 
And, you know, um, guys found me with a couple good passes right in the shot pocket. I was able to load it up quick and, and get the shot off. So I think, uh, you know, for me, it's just about staying aggressive. And, you know, that's something that I wanted to do tonight. And also understanding, you know, the guys that we got out, uh, it has to be done by committee. It's not just going to be one guy that make up the production that we're missing. Draymond, uh, you had a chance to, uh, of course, do that, that pregame where you gave the ring to uh, Gary. What was that uh, like for you? I know you only had 58 seconds, but. It was a very special moment. And um, shout out to Raymond Ritter and Michael Levine for making that happen. And <clears throat> quite frankly, I had so many words that I wanted to say. But if I, if I screwed that up, then we couldn't do that for Otto Porter and Damian Lee, and I did not want to mess up those guys' moments, so I tried to get my words out as fast as I could. But honestly, um, you know, that was just such a special moment. Uh, Gary is a guy who's been through the ringer in this league and continued to battle, 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 got to the point where he was asking to be on the coaching staff here, you know. And, you know, I think back to – and I spoke about it a little earlier with a few people – when he got his, when he had that first 10 day and it was up, and um, I never forget we were in Boston, if I'm not mistaken. I think that's the game Juan like cracked his head open, if I'm not mistaken. And he came up to me after and he was like, "Man, thank you for everything." And I'm like, "Yeah, it's a great win. Well, I think we won that game." And he's like, uh, "Like, what are you talking about?" He's like, "What? That's my. That's the end of my 10 day." It's like, "Oh." Great. I mean, you'll get another one. You know, you're helping us win games. And that's where I think our relationships with our front office, with our ownership group, you know, we, we Steph and I called Bob, and Bob's like, all right, well, if y'all want to give him another 10 day, then we'll give him another 10 day. And for him to become one of the most vital pieces on a championship run, uh, you know, just to share that moment with him was so special. And, you know, it's not something that I take for granted. I've always said, you know, uh, you win the first championship and it's absolutely amazing. For me, the last three, the most enjoyment that I get out of it is watching the guys who never done it before. And so just to share that moment with him was special. And, uh, you know, you're happy uh, he got paid and got his money. But at the same time, it's one of the guys you, you just hate to see go. I asked you a little bit at shoot around about your comments about the team being needing to toughen up mentally. And this is the second consecutive game where you guys overcame a double figure deficit in the second half to win. What do you think has been the biggest changes to make you guys be able to lock in more and be more, have more of that competitive edge in those crunch times? Uh, I think, um, you know, guys aren't sulking, guys aren't feeling, feeling sorry for themselves. You know, Every night is somebody different, you know, and I think that's that's the key. Like I said, when you when you're missing the production that we're missing, you're not just gonna find one guy that, and you're gonna say, "Oh man, you're gonna do it every night and bring what Steph is bringing and bring what we." It's just not gonna happen, and so you have to do it by committee. And you and, and like I said, it's it's a different guy every night. I think um, our defense has been a lot better. We're starting to lock in really on that side of the ball and these two wins. I think we well, we finished that game on a 12-0 run or something like that. That's We couldn't get a stop leading up to that. And so I think guys are really just locked in on the defensive side of the ball. And when you do that, you get easier things on the offensive end. Then once the offense gets a little tougher, you, you have more of a rhythm because you've gotten some easy buckets. You've gotten out in transition and got some stuff. And so... I think that's been the key. Uh, it's playing off our defense, not allowing our offense for most for the most part to negatively affect our defense. 